Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we'll be looking at space weather, mostly the forecast for the next 72 hours. We also have some earthquakes to hit, a story on modeling a Carrington-level super flare impact, Comet Atlas, and the solar micronova story of the year. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find the first ESDO calibration rolls took place. All the other satellites showed very little happening during that time. Then the northern departing sunspot gave one more flare in CME, and then the smaller confined pops took over the disk. No flares for about 12 hours. And folks, the CME impacts we are expecting are still coming. There are supposed to be three CME impacts and then a coronal hole stream on Saturday. Maybe some combine, maybe they hit back to back to back. It's the only space weather story on tap right now, and all is quiet right now, while we wait for the arrival of those solar storms. Two noteworthy quakes, 6.5 in Indonesia, bit of depth to that one, and a shallow one in the Drake Passage. Luckily, there is nobody down there. So we are off next to the articles, and we start with Jeffrey Love leading a team modeling a Carrington-level solar storm. Now, they did it with the old, stronger magnetic field, not with the more modern vulnerability enhancement of the weaker field, but it was still interesting, and regardless of the field strength, which cities take the hit hardest doesn't change. Yellow is where you don't want to be. Darker reds and blacks would have critical systems lasting longer than everywhere else in a major solar storm. Folks, it looks like two spacecraft are going to be fully immersed in the ion tail of Comet Atlas in the next two weeks. Hera and Europa Clipper are both expected to run through the tail the last week in October here. Expect significant data updates at that same time as we're getting the best views of the comet. It's expected then as well. Last but not least, folks, the top story, maybe of the year and definitely in terms of micronova science. Those short-lived nova isotopes. Folks, mainstream science still believes those different isotopes of very short duration come from different types of stellar explosions and mergers, and yet, the mystery they're trying to address here is why they all seem to preferentially arrive at Earth together at the same time, locked in the same sediments, if indeed they came from all those different sources, different places, and across time and space. They don't cross the right finish line in the paper, but the answer is that the sun already makes every known element they detected in the solar wind. So when the sun micronovas, oh yeah, every isotope is possible and they will all arrive together. Nothing but a solar micronova could explain that here on Earth. We will be discussing that and much more at the Winter Tour events, five cities, five months. Lock it in, folks. I imagine that by this time next week, one or two of those cities are going to be sold out. Link to that is below. And folks, only a few major events left in the Observer Ranch rookie year. Halloween and combat training, fun for everyone, end of this month. Film premiere and pole shift conference, middle of November. Come out and see us, ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.